Hi friends, and thank you for joining us in this nightly read-along. Don't forget to ask your parent to subscribe so you don't miss any future chapters. Now here's Miss Kate with tonight's chapters. The Wild Robot Chapter 75, The Last Rifle. With the target deactivated, Rico 1 calmly moved on to the next phase of his mission. He limped through the gravesite and began collecting every single robot part. He splashed into the shallows and returned with a foot. He shook the sand from a cracked torso. He pulled a head out from a tide pool. Each part was then piled around Rouse's lifeless body. Brightbill watched in horror as his mother slowly disappeared under a pile of parts. Rouse looked just like the dead robots, but she wasn't dead. She had simply been shut down. Don't do it, Brightbill. The flock tried to stop their leader. It's too dangerous. But the goose was determined to bring his poor mother back to life. Brightbill crouched low to the ground and slowly moved toward the pile of robots. And when Rico 1 limped away to collect another part, Brightbill sprinted over the rocks, pushed past arms and legs, and squeezed into the pile. Click. A muffled voice echoed across the shore. Hello, I am Rosam Unit 7134, but you may call me Roz. Brightbill hugged his mother's face as her computer brain rebooted. Mama, wake up! What happened? She said finally. Where is the Rico? He's coming this way! What were you thinking, Bright Bill? You must leave now before he kills us both. I was scared, Mama, cried the goose. I didn't know what to do. Heavy footsteps stomped toward them. Robot parts were knocked aside, and then Rico one looked down with his glowing eyes. Bright Bill tried to squirm away, but thick fingers locked around him like a cage. Mama, help, cried Bright Bill as he was pulled up from the pile. Please do not hurt my son, begged Roz. He is harmless. Rico one paid no attention to Roz. He just held up the goose in his giant hand, ready to crush the life out of him. Mists swirled in the breeze. Waves sloshed against the rocks. Seagulls circled above. No, not seagulls, vultures, and one of them clutched something silver in his talons. The vultures spiraled down and Rico III's rifle clattered onto the shore. Geese and otter quickly surrounded the rifle. They squawked and squeaked and fumbled with the weapon, trying to aim the clunky thing. The hunter was confused. How had those animals gotten a rifle, and could they possibly know how to fire it? They did know. The geese had seen a trigger press before. A beam of light briefly flashed through the gloom. At first it seemed as if nothing had happened, but a moment later Rico One's chest began glowing a brilliant orange, and then it was melting and oozing down his front, and soon there was a wide gaping hole in the middle of his torso. His hand suddenly unclenched, and Bright Bill fluttered away. Seawater sprayed over the grave site and steam hissed up from the Rico's scorching hot guts. He shook and twisted and collapsed beside Roz. Rico way one turned his face to Roz and spoke in a quiet, garbled voice, More Ricos will come for you, and if you destroy them, still more will come. The makers will not rest until all missing robots have been retrieved. When? When will they come? said Roz. How long do we have? You can still be fixed, Roz. Go to the airship. Bring all of the robot parts with you. The ship knows what to do. His voice went silent. His eyes went dark. Rico 1 was dead. Chapter 76 The Broken Robot Geese and otters were bustling all around Roz. They were pulling arms and legs out from the robot pile and pressing them against her body. They were hoping to hear thwip sounds and that the robot limbs would snap right into place and Roz would return to her old self and life on the island would go back to normal. But nothing happened. No matter what they did, the limbs wouldn't attach. Our robot's body was too badly damaged. I'm sorry, Ma, said Bright Bill, his voice trembling. I thought this would work. It is okay, son, said Roz calmly. I am lucky I can still think and speak. The animals tried to smile at their poor friend, but they couldn't hide their sadness. Roz was a mangled wreck, and there was nothing they could do to fix her. The robot wanted to be strong for her son and her friends. She wanted to ease their worried minds and tell them everything would be fine. But Roz knew that everything would not be fine. She looked down at her broken body. Then she looked up at the geese and the otters and said, I will need some help getting home. Chapter 77 The Meeting Strong, nimble creatures carried Roz up the sea cliffs and across the island. They carefully propped her up inside the nest. They built a fire, and then they left the robot with her son. Roz and Brightbill sat there, staring at the flames, until the goose finally said, Do you need anything, Ma? I could really use some new arms and legs, the robot chuckled at her own bad joke. 
That isn't funny, cried the goose. My mother is broken and I don't know what to do about it. I'm sorry for joking. Roz adjusted her voice to a more serious tone. I know you want to fix me, but there's nothing anyone can do here can do. At these words, her son looked away. Right, Bill, I'm afraid we have some difficult decisions to make. I think you should arrange a meeting of our closest friends. We could use their advice. The goose disappeared out the door, and soon Roz's oldest and wisest friends were on their way. Loudwing was the first to arrive. She limped into the lodge on her injured foot and sat close to her robot friend. Mr. Beaver appeared next, followed by Fink and Swooper. Then Tawny curled up on the floor. Mother Bear was too badly hurt to make the journey, so Nettle came in her place. She sat in the garden with her enormous head jutting in through the doorway. Brightville returned with Chit Chat, who was nursing her burned tail. The last one to crawl in was Crag, the old turtle. Once everyone was there, the meeting began. The group talked all through the night. They discussed the Ricos. They discussed what to do about Roz. They discussed how to keep the island safe. There were stark differences of opinion and tempers flared, but by daybreak the group had agreed to a plan of action. That morning, the dawn truce didn't take place in the great meadow. Instead, it took place in a small meadow by the foot of the mountain in front of the air airship. Weary animals quietly hobbled into the clearing. The only sounds came from a gurgling brook that wound through the gathering and right past our robot. Roz sat in the wet grass. She was leaning against a rock. She looked so sad and frail. However, she, had, she still had her thoughts and her words, and for the moment, that was all she needed. Good morning, animals of the island. Roz's voice filled the meadow. I must look strange to you, all beaten up like this, but I hope I still sound like your old friend. Hundreds of heads nodded. You fought bravely yesterday. You risked your lives defending me, and I am eternally grateful. But many of our friends were wounded. Some may not recover. And there is worse news. Before the last Rico died, he told me that there is more he told me that more of his kind will come to our island. They may already be on the move, and even if we defeat them, still more will come. My makers will not rest until all of their property has been retrieved. They want the dead robots. They want the broken parts. They want me. The crowd was silent. But I care about this island far too much to put any more lives in danger, and so, my friends, I must leave. Voices cried out. Don't go, Roz. Next time we'll be prepared. We risked our lives so you could stay. I hear you. The robot's voice cut through the din. But look at me. My body is ruined. And the Rico said the only ones who can help me are my makers. What if he lied? Held the voice. You can't trust those monsters. You're right, said Roz. He might have been lying. There may be no hope for me. But there is a chance I have to take. Animals, you have taught me to be wild. I want to be wild again, and so I must try to get the repairs I need. It is for the good of me and the island that I return to my makers. A calm settled over the crowd. They knew Roz was right.